Alright boys, you want to learn how to play Tarkov? Good, I'll be explaining everything. Yeah, everything. No bullshit. You don't need to use 2 times speed for this. When you first enter the game, you will be asked to choose a faction. This has no effect other than collecting some different clothes and what language your character speaks. Pick bear unless you want to be a pussy. This doesn't make much sense the first time you open the game. The first option, this is how you enter a game. Back to this in a minute. Character. You will only have a few small pieces of shit when you start. On the left is your character, and all the items he is currently holding. This is what you will bring into the game with you. But what do you bring with you? Well, it depends what you are willing to lose. Dying in this game means losing whatever you brought into that raid with you. Yes, it's kind of brutal, but it makes every choice you make more meaningful and makes the entire experience more intense. It's like smoking crack. But back to it, what should I bring? If you want a standard kit, you should have a gun, a few magazines, meds, a helmet, armor, a tactical rig, and a backpack, but this is all optional. You can bring as much or as little as you like. Keep in mind that your risk and reward in this game is tied together. More on this later. Trading. This is where you buy and sell gear. Each trader will sell you different kinds of items and will buy your items at different prices. Don't worry, you mainly only need to remember two things. Therapist and mechanic. Mechanic will buy guns and gun related things at the best prices and therapist will buy pretty much everything else. Some items are stupid and will need to be sold to fence. Pretty simple. Ragman can buy the rest of your gear because he's Ragman, but you won't buy some gear if it's like fucked so you need to sell that defense some items can be traded for with other items and we'll show you how much of each you need. Quests. There isn't an option in the menu for these as quests are given by traders. They will range from killing AI enemies to collecting items in the game. I won't go into these as the Tarkov wiki is your best friend and all the info is over there along with the easiest ways to get these done. And you will want to get these done as they will allow traders to give you higher end items and give you more money for the items you sell to them. They will also give you good rewards upon completion and give your character XP to level up. Doing these is going to be your main goal in early to mid game. Flea market. This is your bread and butter for making fat stacks once you unlock it at level. Level 10. Here you can sell any item at any price as long as you found that item in raid and it has found in raid status. This means that any item not brought into the raid by a player. You can check if an item is found in raid if it has this little tick. It can feel clunky at first using the flea market, but in no time you'll be flying through these menus faster than a raider one tapping you from 100 meters away. Generally, you should sell an item just under the price of the cheapest listing, as it will be bought first and if you're selling a lot of items on the market, you will want them sold as fast as possible, as you can only have three offers up at one time. Hideout. This piece of shit crack den can be upgraded using items. Check the wiki for what order you need to upgrade things. Mostly you will want to upgrade all of them when you can. They can give bonuses like out of raid health regen and the option to craft more items. Also mining bitcoin. Yes, this is the thing in game and the main reason you will want to upgrade your hideout. You can also just not bother with the hideout, which is what I did for a long time because it doesn't have any effect on the in-raid gameplay, which is what I find most fun. This is the exit button. This is how you escape from Tarkov. Handbook is something I have opened once, and to get rid of the useless notifications, just click on it. Ignore this waste of space. Presets is something a lot of people use and allows you to save presets of weapon and attachment combos. I don't use it for reasons I will go into later, but go ahead if you want to. It does its job. The messages tab is how you add friends by name, send them messages, and how the traders will give you items for completing quests. Escape. This is the fun part and the reason we all addicted to this game like mindless crack addicts. There are no teams in this game. It's all for yourself unless you spawn in with a friend. Everyone will try to kill you, so don't try and make friends. You have two main options on how to play the game, spawning in as a scav or your main character. Using the scav will allow you to spawn into a raid at random time in that raid with a random set of shitty loot. You can use this to get some free loot and just because it's fun. You'll have separate extracts when you're a scav. After choosing scav or PMC, you can choose a map and one of two times in the Tarkov world. These are 12 hours apart and usually one is day and one is night. Daytime in Tarkov is from 6 to 9 p.m. After choosing the time, you have the option to play offline. This can be useful for learning, but in my opinion, I would just play normally. The next screen is your insurance. Insurance costs a little, but you should do it every raid on all your items that aren't in your secure container. If you insure an item, Propor will give it back to you after 24 real hours if nobody made it out of the raid with your item. Pretty cool. If your friend dies, you can dump your friend's items in a bush so that they can get their items back, as it's hard to find the items if they're in a bush. The next and final screen is the invite screen. It'll show a list of people who are also on this screen. Nobody ever plays with random, so this isn't useful unless you're wanting to play with a friend. And if they are on your friends list and on this screen, they will be at the top of this list. Right click and click invite to group. When you're ready, click ready and wait. Before I explain any of the maps, I should explain how this game works. On any map, there are a set of spawn points you will be put into randomly at the start of the raid, at the same time as all the other people spawning in with their main character. You go to get loot, kill each other and shit, but eventually you'll need to escape. 
whether it's because you're full of loot or the time is running out. You can check which places you can extract by double tapping the O key when in game. This will give you a list of places you can extract from. Your extracts will mostly be on the other side of the map that you spawned in on. There are mostly two sets of extracts on most maps, one on one side and one on the other. I'll mention when this isn't the case when I go over each map. Extracts are what makes combat happen, because everyone needs to get to the other side of the map and people spawn on both sides. The spawns and extracts are different when using the scav mode but mostly follow the same other side of the map rule. When you start the game you won't know the maps and Tarkov is being realistic so it doesn't give you any mini map or hard with your location. This is where you open Google and find a map like every other player and put it on your second monitor, phone or discord overlay to check when you're playing. Don't worry it won't take long to get the gist of a map and when you start you should probably stick to one of the maps for a while. The enemies you find will mostly be bots called scavs but aren't scavs players with random loot? No, scavs are both but mostly bots with bad aim and talk a lot. Players can spawn in as scavs and take control of them. There are other bots which are raiders which have much better aim and much better gear. These spawn rarely and in select spots in the map with their boss and the boss is different for each map. Most maps will have these but some don't. I'll go over these later in the map section. When looting keep an eye on your character's current weight. If you get too heavy you will need to stop moving to regen stamina and your character will walk slower. Eventually you can hit a maximum where you cannot run and walking is very slow. This is why it's useful to throw your backpack on the ground if you get into a fight while you have a lot of loot. Holding C and scrolling allows you to crouch at different heights. You could use this to peek more effectively over obstacles but keep in mind that in Tarkov your bullets come out of the end of your gun and if you aren't aiming high enough over your cover it'll hit that instead. Guns. There are a lot of guns and half of them are AKs. One thing to note when choosing guns in this game is that a gun's damage doesn't exist. It's the bullets that go into the gun. Many guns take the same bullets meaning they deal the same damage. For any given calibre there are many rounds to choose from. This is confusing at first but using this wonderful sight you can see how much damage any bullet does along with what armour that bullet can penetrate. You don't just want to use a round that has high damage you want one that pierces more armour. A round with the highest damage won't do any of the damage if you shoot someone with any decent armour. Bullets also have different speeds. This isn't too important until you get more into the game but just remember you can check how fast a bullet flies when you double click on any round. As you check the flea market and can see the best bullets cost a lot of fucking money but that's just another chad thing you'll come to expect with the best items. Pistols generally suck. The best pistol costs about the same amount as a gun that shoots the same bullets full auto with less recoil. But they're good at killing scabs when you're just starting out. Guns are more complicated in Tarkov than most games because they're built with parts and attachments. Required parts are parts that need to be on the gun to be able to equip that gun. These are like barrels, pistol grips and upper receivers. It's probably the most daunting part of starting out with this game but there are extremely useful tools that will make building and modifying guns super easy. Double clicking on your gun will show all the parts on that gun. If you right click a part or the gun itself and choose link search it will allow you to see all the attachments that fit directly onto that part. A good analogy is choosing link search on a barrel will allow you to show what the barrel fits onto and also what attachment fits on the end of the barrel. This feature is why I don't use presets. You can build guns just as effectively just using linked search. The ergonomics of a gun show you how fast you can aim down sights with that gun. Anything above 50 is generally fine. If a gun part changes your recoil or ergonomics it will tell you when you double click on it. Some of the main categories of attachments to consider include sights. Most red dot sights are pretty mediocre with either the reticle being too easy to lose or the housing of the sight blocking a lot of your sight and also many take a big hit to your ergonomics. The ones that are good in all of these factors are much more expensive. I would recommend hollow sights as they're a budget compromise. Foregrips aren't the recoil reducing powerhouses you may expect. They can tackle a little recoil control but most of the recoil reduction comes from your barrel choice, your stock choice and your muzzle choice. The better choice for foregrips is generally high ergo as these can give massive amounts of ergo with the best recoil reducing foregrips only giving a relatively small amount. However some are just too cool not to use. If you want my advice for a gun you don't need to mod much it's the DTMDR. It's cheap as hell, put a sight on it and it's usable and very capable and reliable gun. Use M856A1 until you unlock M855A1. This can easily compete with anyone you run into. Grenades are very powerful in Tarkov and have different fuse timers. You cannot cook grenades in this game but don't worry. There are many with very short fuse timers. They have different explosion radiuses and fragment amounts. All this info can be found by double clicking on them. Gear is just as important as the gun you are using. Armor has different classes ranging from 1 to 6. The higher the armor class is, the more effectively it can stop armor penetrating bullets. Don't be fooled by the durability stat of a piece of gear, this is just the health of the armor. When it reaches zero it will stop protecting you from any damage. It is better to wear high armor class with less durability than low armor class with more durability. Starting with helmets, these only cover the parts where the 
helmet is on your head. Your face is fair game for any bullet that won't get stopped by your helmet. You can get face visors to stop this, but they only go on select helmets. It will show you which area a helmet will protect you in this section here. Helmets have ricochet chance, a thing that will save you much more than the actual bullet stopping armor class of that helmet. This value determines the likelihood of a bullet bouncing off the helmet and doing very little damage to you. Vests act the same as helmets but do not have ricochet chance. Most of these protect the stomach and thorax but some just protect your thorax. All gear can also affect your ergonomics, turning speed and movement speed. Your sprint speed isn't affected by the movement speed debuff of gear. Tack rigs is where you want to put your magazines. If a magazine is in your backpack, it won't be used to reload when you press R. Backpacks are what you expect, just a place to put your loot. Some items that can contain loot can fit more loot inside of them than the squares they take up. This is useful when looting as you can take an enemy's backpack or tack rig and put it in your backpack to store more loot. Face covers are more important than you might think. A beautiful pink Russian face stands out way more than a grey balaclava. These are extremely cheap from Ragman. Glasses are also important as they reduce the amount of rain droplets on your screen when it's raining and they also look cool. You can also get coloured armbands from Ragman so you can tell your teammates from enemies more easily. You can also get different base clothes from Ragman by levelling up or completing different quests. The secure containers are a cool mechanic that allows you to put items into that you can keep even if you die. Usually you should put your meds and keys in here. Keep in mind that if you find an expensive item you should put it in here too. But if you die it will not have found in raid status but can still be sold to traders. You can get bigger secure containers by doing quests or by getting the most expensive edition of the game. Some people say this is pay to win but it doesn't take too long to get the better containers anyway. But who is winning? The dude with the small container or the guy who spent fuckload of money? A lot of gear in this game can be unlocked by leveling up your traders but some of the better bullets and loot are unlocked by completing specific quests. Sound. Your hearing is affected by what you wear. If a helmet covers your ears, your hearing will be muffled. Lots of the helmets you find on scarves will make your hearing shit and are bad anyway. Most of the more armoured helmets will impair your hearing heavily. The best helmets are the ones which allow you to wear headphones while using them. Headphones compress the audio you hear, allowing you to more distinctly hear quieter sounds and levelling out more loud sounds. These are key. I use all of them but most people hate the GSSH ones as they sound like ear rape but the rest of them are pretty much the same and boost low frequencies and cut out the ambient sounds. I would always recommend wearing these even if it means not wearing a helmet. Running makes the most sound next to prone movement. If you want to be stealthy, crouch and hit caps lock. This slider shows how much noise you make. At the top you move at your max speed but make the most noise, and at the bottom you make the least noise but move slowly. Brushing past bushes makes a lot of noise and should be avoided most of the time. All the actions you can hear your character doing, others can also hear if they are close enough. I should mention, your character has a health bar for each limb. When it reaches zero on most of these, that limb's functionality is severely impacted and cannot be healed from meds. To repair a fully destroyed limb, you will need a survival or CMS kit. It takes a longer amount of time. If your head or thorax gets shot to zero you die. These are your vital parts and don't act the same way as your arms or legs or stomach. When a limb is shot it has a chance to either have a light bleed, a heavy bleed or a fracture. Light bleeds can be healed with a bandage or most medical kits. Heavy bleeds can be stopped using a salewa, a tourniquet or a hemostatic syringe. You want to stop heavy bleeds as soon as possible as they leave a blood trail on the ground and make all of your limbs lose health rapidly. And fractures can be healed by using a splint. On the topic of meds, there are a variety of stimulant injectors that are quite rare. They have different effects such as increased stamina, allowing you to carry more weight and gear and health regen. You also have a hunger and thirst meter. These are exactly what you expect. Just eat and drink so that they're full. When managing your inventory and you grab an item, press R to flip that item. Maps. Each map serves a different gameplay purpose. The factory is small and close quarters, whereas woods is open and good for sniping. They were even thoughtful enough to add a dedicated HVH zone. As I said before, you should always have a map up from Google somewhere accessible when playing on a map you are unfamiliar with on a second monitor or a phone or whatever. You can see how many players will be spawned on any given map here. Custom. Let's start with a map everyone knows and most people learn the game with. There are a few reasons why this is probably the best map to play for the first 50 hours of this game. It has a lot of separate areas with different gimmicks and lots of loot. This area is a place where no one goes ever. There is no loot here. This is Big Red. Not much loot here but somehow always seems to have a huge fight going on. This river has four different bridges to cross. Choose the one best for your circumstance however some make it easy for you to be spotted and sniped at. This area spawns a lot of scabs and allows you to get to the crack house, one of the best loot areas in this map. You can get intelligence folders in this room and expensive meds in this one. The bottom floor has a lot of good shit too. This area is the trenches from World War 1. This is a spawn for Rashala, the scab boss on this map. He spawns with a few raiders and they all have very good loot but as with all raiders these boys love lobbing grenades at you. Oh god that's the crew. Oh, there's two nades! Oh, 
I'm this area is old gas station, another area for a lot of scavs to spawn, and also an extract. This tree here can have some good shit underneath, and inside the gas station has a loot spawn that can spawn any item in the game on it. This building is a great sniper outpost with a lot of angles to choose from. This area can spawn scavs and has a mounted gun. These shoot big boy bullets that ignore armor, but when you start shooting you can be heard very easily and you're an easy target. This whole area is just woodlands with the dorms in the middle. This is where most of the geared players go, it has some of the best loot in the map and also is just fun to fight in. Scav boss can also spawn here. It also has a marked room. This can be unlocked with a marked key and has a limited amount of uses. These marked rooms can be found in a lot of the maps and have a lot to do with the lore in this game. You can find more about this online and by doing quests. This is the radio tower, pretty useless but has some loot. This military blockade can spawn scavs and can be passed through by crouching through this barbed wire. This area has a bunch of warehouses with extremely good loot and scavs out in the open. It is linked with the old gas station here. The new gas station is a hotspot for fights even though it has limited loot. It's a big choke point. The scav boss can also spawn here as well as more scavs. This broken lamppost looks like a person lying down, it's not. There are also hidden loot caches all around the map that can contain some insane shit, but I won't be going through them individually for the sake of time. That's pretty much it for this map. Factory, this map can be hectic or quiet. You can spawn very close to other players to remember when you spawn each time you play, to remember where other players can be right when you spawn. The extracts are pretty simple on this map. You can extract from any of them at any time. Two of them require a key and one doesn't. If you plan to extract using the locked one, watch for little pussies camping, it's very common. Not much loot here except for a safe on this top floor and some random tidbits around the map. This top floor is where most of the fights post spawning will take place. Watch the rafters as you have access to most of them and are a good strategic place to shit on unsuspecting chads with no repercussions. Woods is a big forest with two main areas, trees and loot. In the loot area there can be the scav boss Sturman and his buddies and scabs can spawn all over the place. This map is pretty linear with two sides where players can spawn and extracts on the other side. One requires a key. There isn't too much to this map but that's how it's meant to be with many sniper spots to watch out for on rocks. Also one one fuck off spot that you can climb up onto you should always check. The scav boss will always drop a key if he's killed which can open this box, however it's better to sell this key on the flea market as it'll give you more money than what the box contains, and also only takes up one slot in your inventory. Interchange. This big shopping center is scary as hell and makes me want to die. The second floor generally has more loot with some tech stores and high value stuff. Learning the layout is a pain in the ass so watch your map and try to keep your bearings at all times to get more used to it. It spawns probably the scariest scav boss in the mall, Killer, the unofficial mascot of Tarkov. This stim addict has a big helmet and aimbot with expensive gear and can be found in the Adidas store and around the bottom floor. Outside of the store is mostly just empty with the extracts in the corners. Watch for snipers and stick to cover out here. Shoreline. This map is pretty unique. A lot of the map is reminiscent of woods but with a lot of landmarks and vision blocking hills to keep you safe from snipers. There is a big channel blocking down the middle of the map with a few choke points to go through. These two towers make good sniping positions but are more obvious. The town can have some good loot but scav spawn here and also the scav boss Sanitar along with some raiders. He's pretty standard with a unique backpack. He can also spawn at the resort. The resort is where most of the main shit goes down in this map and where the best loot is. The two wings are filled with rooms that are mostly locked but the keys are relatively cheap. Some of the most geared players come to the resort so watch yourself. The extracts are pretty standard on each side however there is an extract with a chance of being open behind the resort along the river. There is also an island that has a little bit of loot and regularly spawns scavs. There is also a pier that can also have the scav boss but doesn't have too much loot. Reserve. Saving the best for last, this mid-sized map has it all. This hill section is raised and has many sniping spots. Also houses an extract which requires an expensive melee weapon, the Red Rebel Ice Pick. Most of the buildings are marked with a chess piece which is extremely useful for squad communication and also makes learning the map easier. Being a military base there is a lot of military tech and weapon and weapon parts spawns. However most of the best rooms are locked. There are three marked rooms on this map and these are hotspots for combat at the beginning of the raid. Some of the most raiders spawn on this map with or without the scav boss accompanying them. The scav boss Gluha has the most health of all the bosses and has some very good loot. There is an underground section which has four locked areas, all with loads of loot. Raiders can spawn down here. If you're low on loot, grabbing these keys on the market and bringing a big backpack to reserve is a great way to stock up. The only extract that doesn't require doing some extra shit is the cliff extract, which needs an ice pick and rope. The armored train extract arrives late into the raid and can bring raiders with it, and is a hard way to extract. There is the bunker door which requires flipping a switch on the other side of the map, however this will bear an annoying alarm to the whole map alerting to your position at the switch and also that someone may be wanting to extract through the bunker door. Most of the time people just flip it to fuck with the other players as the alarm is annoying. 
There is another large underground section connected to many buildings which has loads of loot and people generally rarely come down there. Most people on this map are seeking out fights so be extremely wary of making noise and no gunshots will attract chads. The tech room is a hotspot for fights and can be accessed without the key from the top floor. Be mindful snipers often watch this room and people are commonly here. There are towers around the map that snipers will use but they generally get killed as you can easily be spotted inside them. So that's pretty much all the basics and most of what you need to know when playing this game. Thanks for watching.